President of the Citizens Committee, Mr. Pupink. Merci, Madame la Présidente, pour votre accueil. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, for your uh, warm welcome here. Thank you for your introductory remarks. We'd like to thank the European Parliament, who, uh, according to the, the rules of the Citizens' Initiative, have organized this event. We've got a, a good number of people present here in the room. I'd also like to thank all of those who are following this uh, meeting on the Internet. It's a very important day for two reasons. First of all, it's important because today almost two million European citizens have come together and stated publicly before the European institutions that humanity, human dignity, the life of all human beings is important from conception. Well, this is a difficult statement for some people to accept, but it's important that it should be said and understood. And that's why we've come here today. And the second reason why I say this is a very important day is for the uh, democratic legitimacy of the European institutions themselves. Well, it's well known that the European institutions are suffering from a lack of democratic legitimacy. That's uh, the way citizens see th things. For us, today's not the end of our initiative. We haven't collected nearly two million signatures simply to hold a hearing. We had a very good meeting yesterday at the European Commission. We're very pleased with it. And we've not uh, just come here for the hearing and the, that meeting. Well, we've already heard lots of uh, uh, European Parliament hearings on lots of different subjects. You don't need two million signatures to hold a hearing at the European Parliament. From a democratic point of view, well, what do we expect? We expect the Parliament and the Council to debate in the next legislative period our legislative proposals. We expect the Commission, which has already as, uh, assured us that our legislative uh, uh, proposal falls under the scope of the European Union's competences and is in line with the Treaty on Fundamental Rights, so they should not place any obstacles for personal political reasons to the good functioning of the institutions. The Commission should ex accept that this initiative should be shared with citizens and it should use its right of initiative under the treaties because I think that you can show, you can see how successful we've been in collecting signatures just to see what support we have behind it. We expect that the European Parliament would, should give its full and complete support for giving true effect to the, uh, uh, the European Citizens Initiative. Well, we should be uh, frank here. It's very difficult for the Commission to abandon its uh, exclusive powers of initiative and hand it over to the citizens. So we're rec relying on the European Parliament to, uh, to back us up here. So today I have the honour of addressing you as a representative of the organising committee of the uh, Citizens Initiative, One of Us, which to date is the Citizens Initiative which has collected the largest number of signatures across Europe. The uh, One of Us initiative has collected almost two million signatures and that makes it the largest petition in the history of the European institutions. Our proposals are within the uh, competences of the European Union. They are in line with uh, European law and fundamental rights. This has already been checked and uh, approved 
by the European Commission in the prior uh, examination of the initiative. So the initiative has thus fulfilled all of the necessary conditions. This should now form the basis of a legislative proposal that should be discussed by the next Parliament and by the Council. The objective of the hearing today is not to try and uh, preempt the political debate that's going to take place on the basis of our proposal. The idea is that we should have a chance, we representing two million European citizens, to explain in detail our proposal. Our proposal is simple and clear. It's based on the European acquis and it is fair and beneficial. Through respect for life and the dignity of all human beings, we call for the inclusion of an ethical clause in European regul um, legislation that specifically excludes European financing for all activities which could destroy or involve the destruction of, European, uh, of human life. This ethical clause would be a, a broad and cross-cutting clause and would affect the financing of biotechnological uh, research involving the destruction of European embryos and it would also ban the uh, financing of abortion in the context of development aid. What we want to see included is as follows. No source or the funds from the European Union should be attributed to activities which destroy embryos or which involve their destruction. Well, why? The reason is that all human embryos are one of us. That's the message that's being sent out by more than two million European citizens, which we have the uh, honour to bring before this assembly today. This message might be difficult to hear for some people, just like all truths. It goes against our own selfishness. To su simply suppress undesired children, to exploit human embryos for industrial purposes, to be able to limit demographic growth in poor countries and impose our style of life. These are powers which we uh, call upon you to renounce through respect for human life that when it's just been uh, conceived or still in, in the mother's belly. So we are opposed to everything that could destroy human beings. Our initiative is a public statement, a public statement of the consciences of millions of European citizens who recognize humanity and the individual rights of all human beings since conception. This statement, well, we know that a lot of people and organizations who are represented here are fundamentally opposed to it. We know very well that these organizations which prom promote uh, abortion and unethical research on human embryos would appear to be much more powerful than we are. But who is being represented by who? There are powerful financial interests there are transnational lobbies out there defending minority and ideological interests. Compared to that, we as citizens have, have, don't weigh very much. We've got very little power and a very small voice. But this statement of our conscience should remain. This initiative, our initiative, has been supported by a huge number of volunteers who I would like to uh, thank publicly here. The initiative has brought together the support of a huge number of European citizens and I'd like to thank them for their support. This has brought in more signatures than any other European petition ever launched. In this uh, group of people there are only volunteers. Nobody is working here for any personal financial interest. We have all decided to act because we have attentively listened to our consciences. 
which have told us that the life of any individual starts at conception and that from that moment onward any human embryo is an individual and deserves our respect. There's a fundamental reason for this respect. A, a human being is more than a thing or an animal. Any human being has a conscience so that they can understand what is true and what is good. And it's on the basis of that conscience that we call upon you to ensure that no European fund should be uh, earmarked for the destruction of European embryos or any kind of research that uh, would involve such a thing. To have uh, any different opinion would be to believe that a human being is nothing but an animal. What we are calling for from the European institutions is that more respect should be given to human beings. Two million Europeans have been calling upon the institutions to raise the bar and on their values to progress and make uh, further progress in being more human. A real human being exists even before birth from the moment of conception. And as a human being, that person also has a natural and inalienable rights. They deserve reinforced protection from society because it's, it, they are a vulnerable person. We can't hide behind our ignorance to try and justify the destruction, the destruction of embryos. Today we know, well, science tells us that Every individual life is an interact, in, uh, uninterrupted continuum from conception to death. From conception, a human being is fully uh, prepared with uh, his characteristics to destroy human embryos. And politics supporting that is never acceptable. Now two million people have come together listening to the voice of their conscience to try and take on these policies. Citizens are increasingly aware of the respect that all human life deserves. For years now we have been calling for a, a, a reawakening of awareness on this front. If you look at uh, legislation in a number of uh, European countries and in the Americas to see that people are becoming more aware of these issues. Europe is based on values, respect for life and human dignity. I think Europe should be uh, exemplary. That's what we're calling for from you. It's not an unacceptable request. I think it's in fact a very reasonable request. But it's not a question of following short-term financial interests. The, respect that's deserved by all human life from uh, conception is recognized broadly in European and international law. European regulation already uh, forbids the destruction of Europe European em embryos in research. There are no patents allowed for uh, processes that involve the destruction of embryos. And both of these, propo uh, these uh, legislative texts understand the concept that uh, embryos have human dignity. The Oviedo Convention on Biotechnology also could enshrines this principle. And the uh, Council of Europe has also made statements on a number of occasions. That in one recommendation they state that the embryo and the human fetus should benefit from uh, the uh, respect deserved by their human dignity. We call upon the European institutions to be coherent, to draw the uh, right conclusions and protect human life from conception. What the signatories call for is not simply a question of uh, basic morality, the respect for life and human dignity, but it, it's also based on uh, scientific justifications as well as social and legal justifications. Science shows us that uh, research on embryonic stem cells is pretty much obsolete these days. 
It's for social reasons as well, because abortion doesn't improve maternal health or society, and for legal reasons, because the uh, actions of the European Union uh, are legally and ethically incoherent. It has taken centuries for humanity to uh, put an end to slavery. It took centuries. It took centuries for us to uh, recognize all human beings as our equals, that a, a foreigner is the same as one of us. But political, financial and social reasons opposed the recognition of the uh, humanity and the rights of the slaves. Today, we face a similar situation. We're hearing the same kind of arguments, these very utilitarian arguments that basically say that it's important for the economy to be able to s suppress the existence of human beings and exploit them. That they're not totally human, that they're not one of us, equal to us. And even from uh, an economic point of view, the uh, abolition of slavery proved beneficial because it led to the mechanization of agriculture indirectly. If we were to give up on research which destroys human embryos, I think it would be beneficial to the progress of science because it would f favorize other kinds of research such as uh, inducible stem cells. In any case, I think it would be great progress for humanity if Europe, rather than financing and encouraging massively abortion, would commit itself to uh, engaging in a real development policy that would struggle against the uh, causes of maternal uh, mortality and abortion. It's not by financing abortion that Europe is going to improve uh, maternal health. Quite the contrary. If Europe wants to improve maternal health in poor countries, we should be improving medical infrastructure. We should be improving the training of medical personnel, and even the roads, because it's the lack of infrastructure that causes maternal mortality. It's not by making a financing of abortion a priority that we're going to improve maternal health. Quite the contrary. Even in industrialized countries, uh, abortion is a major cause of maternal mortality. Countries which limit abortion are precisely those with the lowest levels of maternal mortality. Look at the examples of Chile, Ireland and Poland. with this uh, excuse of struggling against maternal mortality that it seems that sexual and reproductive health is now considered to be a tool for profoundly changing developing countries' societies by reducing their birth rates. What we're talking about here is basically trying to export to poor countries the supposed Western social model which involves contraception and abortion as its major tenets. But this policy breaks down families and that's the very basis of any society. Through colonialism the West has already partially destroyed the social balances in uh, many countries. And through these policies, Europe is trying to continue these policies by weakening families and peoples. Is this Europe's idea of development aid? Here too, we're calling upon the European institutions to do a better job to stop financing and promoting abortion and to commit themselves to a policy of uh, development aid that is fully respectful of the of, um, beneficiary societies and the principle of life. Whether we're talking about research, industry or development, 
there is no genuine progress to be based upon the negation, exploitation, and destruction of humanity at the very beginning of a human being's existence. Thank you. Muchas gracias, señor Kupik, por expresar. Muchas gracias, señor Kupik, por expresar con tanta. Merci, madame la presidenta. Thank you, chair. I would like to thank everyone who has participated in the first session of today's debate. I'm going to share my answers to other people in the room who will be able to contribute in a more specific way. What we heard so far this morning was a clear presentation of the situation which we find ourselves in at the present time. Legal rules do not determine the ethics of a particular practice. We have not come here to ask the European Parliament to justify itself to justify and to recall decisions taken in the past. We came here for a simple reason. I heard on several occasions that people saying that the debate was complex or ambiguous. There is no complexity in what we are calling for and in what we say. There is no ambiguity in what we say and what we call for. The issue is simple. It is a moral and scientific one. It's not a legal issue. We are saying, we affirm that from the point of conception, an individual life, a human life, begins. And as such, as any other human life, it must be respected. Its dignity and its integrity must be respected. There's nothing complicated in that. It is a scientific fact which cannot be refuted any longer. What is at stake here is a scientific fact. The problem here is with those who claim that an embryo, a fetus, is nothing at all. That is the problem here. And to underscore this, unfortunately, there is a certain mysticism attached to abortion, and we have heard that today. And this is the issue at stake. It is clear, it is becoming increasingly clear it is understood that life begins at the point of conception and must be respected. It's not more complicated than that. I am delighted to have been able to participate this morning to hear from members of the European Parliament who adhere to this scientific fact. It is a scientific fact. On the legal aspects. The European Commission within the second framework program and today has committed not to not finance the destruction of human embryos. The European Commission is committed to that, to not funding the destruction of human embryos. The question was asked openly yesterday and the answer was direct because the Commission respects the dignity of human embryos. This is a fundamental 
principle and it includes ethical rules. This is the respect of human dignity and this is why the European Commission refuses to fund their destruction. We are pleased that the European Commission respects this principle. But what we want is for the European, production, uh, European Commission to be consistent. The European Court of Justice is instructive on this matter. It has said two fundamental points. It's true it hasn't said it directly. That wasn't the point of the case. But it made two general points which make a contribution to our debate. First of all, the court defined the human embryo from conception. And this is an interpret interpretation separate from European law, but which applies for European legislation. The embryo has been clearly defined. We can't say any more that we don't know what a human embryo is. We have a scientific definition. The second point, the court said that the human Embry embryo deserves human human dignity as well and this is a vital point and it has said that you should not be able to profit from an embryo's destruction the link to the ethics regulation proposed by the commission is the following the court in Luxembourg has said very clearly that should research presuppose the destruction of an embryo this affects research as a whole in all its subsequent, subsequent stages the destruction of an embryo at the start of a research process has consequences for research as a whole it affects research completely so the Commission needs to be consistent. It's not enough to say that you refuse to fund the destruction of the embryo, but where you will fund later stages in research. This is what we draw from the decision of the European Court, and this is what we need. There is a great deal more I could say on the questions and issues raised. On organs and the removal of organs. The court in its report drew this analogy. The court said very clearly it compared the extraction of cells with the destruction of cells with the extraction of organs which took place in some countries in the Balkans. They said it's the same, if we condemn organ removal from adult human beings, then the same moral judgment applies to unborn humans. That is what the case states on abortion now. It is clear that our interpretation of humanity has general consequences and has consequences for society. This phenomenon, this awareness of human life beginning before birth is something which is increasing. But we are seeing other interpretations which are developing as well. And we are seeing more and more countries recognising the reality on the one hand, we have faith in this increasing awareness and these increasing shifts. It's very clear. The arguments which we have heard against seem more and more futile and based on egotistical motivations or financial interests. I believe that with time we will progress on the comments which have been made on religion. People who are religious have often a concern for human beings and that is at the heart of their lives. 
and it is because of this concern, this concern for more than just oneself, which means that they have a different view. This view has affected attitudes towards slavery in the past. Today, it affects the life of the, it affects our view of the unborn child. I'm now going to give the floor to other members of the committee who will follow up from my argument on my arguments. The professor will speak now.